Happy Easter, everyone. Welcome to the Marketplace. This is a very special pop-up edition of the Marketplace. As you can see, just haven't even quite had the opportunity to put on a shirt or shave or anything because there's so much happening. We had to get together very quickly. Jack Heverin with you, as always, alongside the best basketball newsbreaker in Australia, Olga Norwich from ESPN.com.au. Olga, happy Easter. I think it might be a happy Easter for Melbourne United as well. They've got a big, big signing. That's right, Jack. I'm told Joe Luar Latchell Jr. has signed a two-year deal with Melbourne United. There's a player option on the second year of that deal. Uh, you know, everyone knows Latchell Jr. from two seasons ago with United. He was an All-NBL first-teamer. The season before that, he was the best sixth man, and he helped them to a championship. And so this brings back one of the elite uh, Australian bigs and, and um, you know, really bolsters that front court now. Now, now other teams are going to have to prepare to face not just Joe Luwalachul Jr. now, and and they also, it's also Ariel Huckporty. So that's just a giant front line that teams are going to have to prepare for. And you and I have spoken about this a bit here on Marketplace, the value in having an Australian big. There's another Australian big that we'll get to very shortly, but if you can lock away an Aussie big, it, it opens up your options for what you can do with your import spots. Absolutely. And, you know, now they have... Chris Golding and Joe Luala Chua Jr., who are both guys who you can marquee. Um, it, it does take away some of their flexibility with imports. It probably now means that they can bring in at the most two imports. But, you know, having one of the elite local bigs like Achua Jr., you know, he's one of those guys up there with Duop Reith and, and Nick Kay and, you know, maybe a Brock Modem who every year we think, you know, a team's going to be able to afford them. And thankfully for, for Melbourne, they're able to put the money up. And, you know, Atul Jr. wanted to come home and try it out here. There are some outs in that deal, um, just like every other NBL deal. But, you know, this is it's just a huge signing for Melbourne. And it, it gives them another elite player. Like An, an all-NBL first-team guy is, is not something to be, to be sniffed at. And I think the other thing here too, which is really interesting, is returning to Melbourne. No doubt other teams would have been able to sniff the breeze that Joe was looking to come back to Australia, but he had a system at Melbourne United that worked under Dean Vickerman and decided that this was the best one for him. So I guess it's a big tick for them as far as getting a marquee player back. Absolutely. And the sense that I got, not just from you know the talks you know going into this deal, and I'm told that those things were effectively agreed on weeks ago, um, but it was just about you know ironing down the contract and getting little things sorted. Um, but everything that I've been told over the past two or three seasons is that Dean Vickerman really loves um, coaching actual junior. Um, you know he, he he likes the style of play, he likes the versatility he brings on both ends of the floor. Um, and I think for a team that that struggled with that five position because they they only had Isaac Humphries there last season, Ariel Huckporty had that Achilles injury, so he was out. So. It was, it was an issue they had until they brought Marcus Lee back. Now having, you know, that five spot locked in with both your players, two guys who you know can give you, you know, you know elite production of that position, uh, it, it's an absolute win for Melbourne United. And, and I know everyone was, was thinking, is, is United, are they sitting on their hands right now? They've been working on this deal for some time. And, you know, it's, it's probably, it's going to be one of the biggest deals this free agency. We'll go back to the very first edition of Marketplace. We said, gee, Melbourne United have been quiet. I think now we know why they were quiet, because they were busy doing things in the background and have got another signing that they've just announced as well. That's right. Uh, Tanner Krebs, uh, recently with the Brisbane Bullets, you know, has shown glimpses of, of what he can do as, as, as a backup you know, guard in the NBL, has signed a three-year deal with Melbourne United. There is a player option on the final year of that deal as well. You know, Krebs is someone who had interest from around the league. You know, he's 27, really versatile guard, a big guard, um, can really shoot it too. And so a ton of teams thought we can bring him in and maybe make him one of the main pieces of our franchise. But I'm told that you know the idea of playing alongside someone like Chris Golding and the idea of winning a championship potentially, playing for a competitor, that's something that uh, Krebs is really excited about. Um, and so he lent into that opportunity. And it's also a win for Krebs getting a player option on the third year of that deal. Um, you know, Three years, he's, that deal's going to take him through to you know the age of thirty for him, and so he has the chance to be you know a, a real staple for that franchise going forward. So now looking at Melbourne United's roster, Olgan, and still with with import potential to come, but they they don't want for much right now, do they? When you think about the bigs that they've got stocked up with JLA and Ariel Hook Porty, they've got Chris Golding and Shea Ely under contract. It's not announced that Luke Travers will be at Melbourne United, but that's the the popular opinion at this stage as well. This roster's really starting to take shape. It is, and it's, it's, it's a very local, heavy roster, and that seems to be by design from Dean Vickham and Melbourne United. 
Um, and again, that does limit what you can do with imports. But you know, if you can fill you know that that two spot and that five spot and potentially that four spot with really elite locals, and and you can marquee those guys and. All you need is, you know, one solid import or, you know, one more elite player potentially at the one. And all of a sudden you have one of the better starting lineups in, in the league. And, you know, with someone like Flynn Cameron, who the, the United just announced as well, Krebs, you know, they're starting to build this, this sort of foundation, which last season we saw guys got injured and they didn't really have guys who can step in uh, and make an impact. Now, let's say someone gets injured, you can have a Flynn Cameron or a Tanner Krebs or Aru Hakporti step in and you probably wouldn't lose too much. Let's go to their crosstown rivals, the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Great signing for them. I'm really, really high on this one. Gorjok Gak will be with the Phoenix. Take us through the deal firstly. So this is a one-year deal. Now, we know Gak was coming off uh, an impressive season. He showed a ton of really good flashes throughout that season with the Brisbane Bullets. He made it clear to them really early on that he probably wasn't going to be returning. Teams like the Wildcats showed interest. The Kings showed some interest. But South East Melbourne, you know, there's an opportunity there for him to play uh, behind Alan Williams, and, and I think the idea of him bringing a different look to Williams, you know, Gorjok Gak is a, an athletic big, a, a rim runner, he blocks shots, um, so that it's a different sort of look, he's, I think he's more defensive minded, and I think that works really well under the new head coach, Mike Kelly, um, and the thing I, I also like is, someone like Gak can play behind Alan Williams, but can also learn from him, we saw glimpses of Gak's passing game, uh, throughout his season with the Brisbane Bullets and especially in the Blitz. And so I like the idea of him learning from Alan Williams and those two sort of growing together as a really cool, you know, five-man combo. This is a great signing. And it's also the first one for Mike Kelly as new coach of the South East Melbourne Phoenix. Yeah, and, and as I mentioned, you know, Gak is a defensive-minded big and, and so it, it makes complete sense that Mike Kelly and someone who clearly wants to bring that defensive identity to South East Melbourne, it's something that they haven't really had um, you know, since their inception, bringing in Gak makes a ton of sense there. Um, and you sort of have this, you know, three-headed you know, monster in, in the front court with, with Creek, Williams, and Gak. You know, there's a ton of versatility there. It's not that these aren't guys who are defined in their respective positions. You've got versatility there. You have passing there. You can play them out of different actions. And so I, I, I love the signing for the Southeast Melbourne Phoenix. Let's stay with the Gak family to finish off. And that is AK Gak, a colder Gak known to some has been with the Illawarra Hawks for the last couple of seasons. Hasn't seen a lot of court time. It was a boom youngster. When he was signed, you think about some of his work with the under-19 team, was a hot signature. But for whatever reason in, in the Hawks situation, it didn't work and opportunities weren't there. He's going to take his talents to Cairns under Adam Ford. This, this signing made a ton of sense for both parties. You know, you have someone like a Calder Gack who initially signed that three-year deal with the Illawarra Hawks and you know going into the Hawks he was considered you know a, a high major prospect and so the expectation was hopefully by year two or three he can be developed to a point where he can give you significant minutes in the NBL but that development was never there because the Hawks were always placed differently they were placed as a competitive team and so they didn't really give a Calder Gak the opportunity to do anything and so now he goes to the Cairns Taipans somewhere where he should have an opportunity to play under a coach like Adam Ford who is known for his player development and you know if if any team made sense for someone like a Calder Gak who needed that development and needed some minutes, the Cairns Taipans are that team. And, you know, from everything I'm told about a Calder Gak, he's just excited to, to hit the floor and actually show what he can do because he didn't really get that opportunity in Illawarra. Nice signing for the Taipans. A, cu a couple of very, very good signings for Melbourne and South East Melbourne as well. Well done to them. And as always, Olgan, well done to, the you, to you. You're at the forefront of the news breaking as always. And we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for joining us on the Marketplace, of course. Don't forget, mbl.com.au is where you can go for all of your news, all of the latest happenings during the free agency period. And, of course, you can follow Olgan Ulrich on Twitter as well. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you next time on the Marketplace.